What up, people? This is the eighth part of an ongoing series showcasing some of the hidden gems available on the Nintendo Switch. If you haven't seen parts one through seven, links to the playlist will be in the description below or in the comments section. If there's a game you think I'm missing, I might have already talked about it in one of those videos, so check them out after you watch this one. If you're new to the channel, I mostly make videos about single player games with a heavy focus on RPGs. But for this Hidden Gem series, I always make sure to include many different genres of games. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button to help the YouTube algorithm spread this video around. And with that, here are 10 must buy hidden gems for the Nintendo Switch, part eight. Starting off the list, we have Unsighted. This action adventure RPG was developed by Studio Pixel Punk and published by Humble Games in 2021. When it comes to gameplay, the most notable mechanic in it is the time limit added where if you reach a zero, your character and the NPCs become unsighted, making them permanently disappear from the game. Luckily, there are resources in the game to extend that time if you want to use it for that, and I believe there's an explorer mode that gets rid of the time completely if you want a less stressful gaming experience. I remember playing this on Game Pass and enjoying the very little time I spent on it. I'm not the biggest fan of Metroidvania style games, so that might be why I moved on so fast, but I tend to drop games on Game Pass pretty quickly, so don't take that as any indication of the quality of the game. The game is fairly short, taking people around 8-12 to 12 hours to get through, and the game is constantly on sale, so it'll be really easy to get a good deal on it. But with all that said, if you're looking for a fast paced action game with some pixel graphics to go along with it, Unsighted is a perfect choice. At number 9 we have Half Past Fate. This game is a rom-com sim where you'll play as 6 characters as they find love in funny yet heartwarming ways. I'm not typically into romance stuff, especially in games, but it was something about this game that just caught my attention. My favorite part of the game is how it plays around with different time periods involving the characters. One chapter you'll be playing through an event that happened 8 hours ago, and the next chapter will be from 8 years ago. It was also funny to see how these characters who had very little to do with each other ended up meeting throughout the game similar to rom-coms you see on like Netflix or that Hallmark channel. The characters are what really make this game enjoyable for me and the way this game tied up everyone's storylines was a little predictable but still very satisfying. Similar to Unsighted, you could finish this game over a weekend with its average playtime being about 5 hours and because it's so short, I would advise you to wait for a sale because buying it for $20 is a lot for this enjoyable yet short experience. If you yourself aren't into rom-coms much, this would be a great game to play with a partner or spouse who is. It could also be good if you're looking for a short palette cleanser to play in between other games in your backlog. Either way, while obviously not for everyone, Half Past Fate is a cute and charming romance sim with some very likable characters that doesn't overstay as welcome, and I think if you give it a chance, you won't be disappointed. Next on the list we have Cassette Beast. The game is a turn-based monster collecting game similar to that of Pokemon or Temtem, but the biggest difference being that in Cassette Beast you can transform and fight as the monsters. Record a monster to tape, then play it back to take on its form for battle. Unlike Pokemon and other common games in the genre, all monsters are visible to the overworld and you can choose whether or not you want to fight them or not. During battles, each monster can use attacks that are assigned with stickers, which can be transferred between different monsters. Monsters and players have separate health bars and once both characters' health reaches zero, the player is sent back to the main town. After winning fights, the player receives experience points instead of the monsters, meaning that player characters provide base stats that monsters then add to, providing Fina to try out different setups. Recording certain type of monsters will give your character more moves that you can use outside of combat to explore the island's open world, which is also filled with puzzles and hidden chests. Similar to Unsighted, I checked this out on Game Pass solely because I'm a huge Pokemon fan. But unlike Unsighted, the only reason I dropped this game specifically was because I wanted to play it handheld, but I didn't feel like buying it at the time. Eventually, I'll buy it and start over because I really love these type of games. You're looking at about 20 hours to get through the main story and an extra 7 to 30 hours depending on how much extra content you want to do. If you're a fan of the Pokemon games like me, or you want something a little different from that tried and true format, I think Cassette Beast has got you covered. At number 7 we have Oxenfree 2 Lost Signals. The game is a supernatural narrative driven adventure game developed by Night School Studio and was released in July of last year. This sequel takes place 5 years after the original game and you'll be playing as Riley, a 30 something adult who returns to her hometown of Kamina for a job. Just like the first Oxenfree, this game is very dialogue focused and a lot of your time will be spent walking, talking, choosing dialogue options and solving the occasional puzzles. Both oxen free games make the choices you decide while talking to characters affect not only how they feel about you, but also their respective endings, and while I prefer the first game to this one, I enjoyed this one enough that I still would recommend it. Speaking of the first game, the developers said that you don't have to play the first game to play this one, which is kinda true I guess. The thing is, oxen free 2 is great on its own, but playing the first game I feel really enhances your experience with the sequel. 
Without going into any spoilers, there are a couple of decisions in the game that are much, much, much harder to choose because of the events that happened in the first game. And as someone who is big on story and characters in video games, please play the first one before playing this. Luckily for some of you, if you have Netflix, you can play both games on mobile for no additional cost. But whether you're playing it on Netflix for free or buying it on the Switch, Oxen Free 2 is a wonderful sequel that incorporates the first game in a very clever and impactful way, and I highly recommend you check it out. Just missing out on a top 5 spot, we have Death Squared. This co-op puzzle game was developed and published by SMG Studio and was released in 2017. The game premise is pretty straightforward. Get the red and blue robots to their respective color-coded goals and you win the level. However, as you continue on, the levels get more and more difficult as spikes, lasers, and traps are added over time, and with 80 levels overall to get through, it's probably going to be pretty intense. Now, I believe the single player campaign only has you using red and blue robot blocks, but the co-op adds up to two more colors so you and your friends can embrace the chaos together. And while the co-op play seems to be what the game promotes a little bit more, the single player campaign I played didn't make me feel like I was missing out on anything. One of the things that stands out the most with this puzzle game is surprisingly the humor. Throughout the levels I played, this guy was having various conversations with an android or something, and it was always pretty funny. Sometimes they would reference what you were doing, but most of the time it would just be random stuff. Thankfully, it never went on too long, which made it much more enjoyable. Like I said earlier, Death Squared is pretty straightforward, so I don't have much else to say about it. If puzzle games are your thing, then this is perfect to play by yourself or with some friends. Starting off the top 5, we have Monster Prom 3 Monster Road Trip XXL. The game is a visual novel slash survival adventure game and was developed and published by Beautiful Glitch in 2022. The game is similar to a roguelike in that each road trip plays like a run, and throughout your run you'll be traveling to various places that will have events to choose from that will boost one of six categories. Those categories being Hype, Magic, Mind, Money, Soul, and Stamina. Any stop you make will increase your points in one category and will lower it in another. But the trick is they don't always tell you which category they're gonna lower, and that's where the fun comes in. Your main goal is to get one of the categories of 25 points to get a destination ending, while not reaching zero in any other ones because if you reach zero, your run or road trip is over and you have to start again. I added a different Monster Prom game to a previous Hidden Gym video, and just like that one, your interest in Monster Road Trip will greatly depend on if you like the humor or not. If you play any of the other games, you know what I'm talking about, but if I had to compare it to anything, it would probably be a mixture of like South Park, Family Guy, and maybe Adult Swim. While I find the game amusing, I would recommend watching a couple less plays to get a better idea of what you're getting into. But anyway, if you're looking for a lighthearted comedy focused game that's perfect for pick up and play sessions, Monster Road Trip is a worthy option. At number 4 we have Gunbrella. This game is a neo-noir action platformer and was developed by indie studio Doinksoft and published by Devolver Digital. The game follows a gruff woodsman on a quest for revenge armed with a mysterious Gunbrella, a firearm that doubles as an umbrella. You'll take on the role of a mysterious protagonist who wields this unique tool to fight enemies, solve puzzles, and traverse various environments. The Gunbrella has three primary functions, shooting projectiles, blocking damage, and also a tool used to traverse zip lines and other terrains. Throughout the game, you'll navigate through a series of levels, and as you investigate the origin of the Gunrella, you'll encounter and interrogate cops, cultists, ghouls, and much more. Resources like scrap and spare parts can also be acquired and used for upgrades and ammunition while you're playing. I'm personally a big fan of Devolver Digital, mostly because of Katana Zero, and while Gunbrella is much more explorative and RPG focused compared to Katana Zero's more level-based gameplay, I still get a similar vibe from it. Maybe it's because of the 2D pixel graphics, but who knows. The game will take most of you around 5 hours to get through and it doesn't really go on sale that much on the eShop, so if you catch it at a discount, jump on it fast. But I digress, if you're looking for a new action platformer that prioritizes weapon abilities and exploration, give Gunbrella a try. Kicking off the top 3 we have Kadisa Hyrule Crypt of the Necro Dancer. This rhythm game was developed by Brace Yourself Games and published by Nintendo in 2019. Cadence of Hyrule combines the rhythm-based gameplay of Crypt of the Necro Dancer with settings, characters, and music from the Legend of Zelda series. You'll be playing the majority of the game as either Link or Princess Zelda, with other characters such as Necro Dancer protagonist Cadence becoming unlocked by progressing through the game or completing certain quests, each with their own unique abilities. One of the funniest things about this game for me was actually how long I waited to get it. I wanted to buy the game with the season pass so I can get the extra Zelda songs with the DLC, but I didn't want to pay full price for it. So I just kept waiting and waiting, constantly checking my wishlist, hoping to get a good sale. And when the bundle finally went under 20 bucks, I jumped on it. 
Now to be clear, I'm by no way a rhythm game guy, in fact this might be the only one I own, but the Zelda music and the gameplay sold me where I figured this would be the perfect game to jump into the genre. And just to be clear again, I suck at this game, like I'm really bad. Well, I'm not that bad at it. It's not the rhythm stuff that has me struggling, it's that I'm so used to playing turn-based RPGs or just games where you have a little more time to think, and having to think about your next moves while also remembering to stay on beat kinda trips me up a little bit. But I'm by no means saying that to take away anything from the game. Katie's a Hyrule is an incredible rhythm game with some amazing music and pixel art. If you're someone who's ever been curious about the rhythm game genre, this is literally the perfect place to start. Just missing out on the number one spot, we have another Switch exclusive with Golf Story. This golf adventure game was developed and published by Australian studio Sidebar Games for the Nintendo Switch and was released in 2017. Golf Story follows a down on his luck golfer attempting to reclaim his childhood love of the game passed down to him by his father after not playing the game for 20 years. The game features 8 unique areas, each filled with side quests and mini games that allow the player to earn experience and money, which can be used to develop your skills or purchase new equipment. Each area includes a 9 hole golf course that can be played after certain missions are completed. Golf is played with a 3 click system in which you'll click once to aim, once to set power, and once to set accuracy. In addition to traditional golf, the game also features a handful of other sports including disc golf, miniature golf, an Atari like golfing minigame, a driving range, and bowls. Ever since I played the golf minigame in Rugrats Search for Reptar when I was a kid, I've always had a mild interest in golf video games or simply golfing video games I enjoyed. And once I found out that Nintendo was putting out a golf RPG, at first I was like, huh? But after seeing gameplay, I was sold. I love the fact that the game isn't just a bunch of golf matches. Some of the side quests utilize golfing in very fun and unique ways. On top of the side quests, I also like the fact that the game has a skill tree. Well, it's more just putting points into various stats, but as an RPG guy, I love that type of stuff, so I'm a fan of it either way. Also, the humor in the game is pretty solid as well, and even though comedy can be subjective, I think most of you will appreciate the writing that went into the story and side content alike. I'm a big fan of RPGs and I know a lot of people who watch my videos are as well, so even if you aren't the biggest golf guy or gal, I think there's enough here where you'll still have a very good experience with it. And at number 1 we have SteamWorld Dig 2. This action adventure platformer is the fourth installment in the SteamWorld series of games and the direct sequel of 2013's SteamWorld Dig. While playing, you'll be in control of Dorothy, a steam driven robot searcher for Rusty, the protagonist of the previous game, who disappeared. Gameplay largely involves exploring a vast underground mine, come back up against enemy creatures while finding various resources as you dig your way downwards. As the game progresses, Dorothy can gain abilities and weapons such as pressure bombs, a hookshot, and a pneumatic arm that can punch through rocks. Any resources found can be traded in for cash in the game's hub world where you can upgrade your health, weapons, and abilities. Each of the weapons have perks that can be activated by installing upgrade cogs found in secret areas. More blueprints for upgrades become available to you by either increasing your level by killing enemies or completing quests or by finding artifacts hidden in the mines. I remember specifically dropping this game because I got stuck somewhere and I kind of forgot this game existed for like 2 years and then one day I randomly decided to play it while scrolling through my library, figured out where to go next and I got really addicted for a little bit. Exploration is one of my favorite aspects of video games. Games like Tears of the Kingdom, Mario Odyssey, and Kirby and Forgotten Land are some of my favorites on the Switch because they really promote and reward discovering things on your own. And while obviously not on that scale, I got that same feeling while playing through SteamWorld Dig 2. The grappling hook specifically is when I really started to have a lot of fun, but the game was great even before then. The SteamWorld games are some of the most underrated and underappreciated games out right now, and SteamWorld Dig 2 is arguably the best of them all. And while Heist is my personal favorite, I feel like Dig 2 would probably be an easier sell for a lot of people. So if you've never played anything from the SteamWorld franchise, SteamWorld Dig 2 is the perfect entry point into this incredible series. Alright guys, that's it for me today. What hidden gems for the Switch do you recommend? Or just Switch games in general? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. If you want to see other videos in the hidden gem series, the playlist will be in the description or click one of the links on the screen. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up with the channel. Later! Yeah.